What's good, Gemini? This is Soul. And Gemini, we're going to look at some energies for you this week, starting July 25th and ending July 31st, 2022. The messages will be for Gemini suns, Gemini moons, Gemini rising signs, singles, couples, and Geminis who are into same-sex loving energies. My fellow twins, I hope all is well. This week, I'll be using the uh, Light Sears Tarot deck to deliver your messages. And, uh, you know, I've just been opening up the messages with, if you are, you know, um, experiencing or part of the heat wave, just be safe. Please do not leave any pets or dogs in the vehicle. Check on the elderly, please. Um, right now where I am, it's like, I think it's a little afternoon. It's a hundred damn degrees already. It, it, you know, the heat is not playing this time around. So just be careful and take breaks, do the things that you need to do early and, um, you know, stay air conditioner, stay cool and do whatever you need to do. <clears throat> All right. So let's see what the energies are for Gemini suns, moons and Gemini rising signs for the week ahead. Oops. Now, Gemini, these cards should be in the upright position, but I've been um, turning over some cards that weren't. But I'll read it in the um, upright position if I happen to uh, turn it over and it's in the reverse. All right, so we'll start with your first energy, and the card is going to be Three of Pentacles. So this is the uh, collaborating card, Work, Reward, uh, Marriage. So you can be recognized for some energy that you have done, whether it's in the workplace environment or outside the workplace environment. Having to either work with another person uh, and you're on the same page to achieve a, a common goal, or you're doing this on your own. This could be indicative of a small pay raise. I always get workplace attraction. So Gemini, you could be attracted to someone in the workplace environment or someone could be attracted to you. Um, also, I've been picking up lately, too, that the Three of Pentacles, for me at least, could be an introduction to a new friend or uh, a potential romantic partner. Three of Pentacles represents Taurus, Capricorn, and Virgo. In your shadow... Um, yeah, by the by the way, the Three of Pentacles, since the energy is going to be supposed to be um, the 25th, the start of the energies, by Wednesday you may be recognized or given some sort of congratulatory uh, praises, or it could be a little bit of money involved, for something that you've done in your recent past. Now here's the card of reward. This is my stamina card, the Nine of Pentacles in your shadow. This is rewarding yourself, Gemini, for... Hey, having the stamina <laughs> to keep something together. Now, this could be a lot of work that you had put in uh, in the actual workplace environment, put in a lot of overtime, extra hours or whatnot. Now it's time for you to take a step back, reward yourself, pay yourself back, pat yourself on the back. Uh, usually I get uh, big ticket purchases with this. So, you know, some of you could be digging into your savings, your investments, 401k, retirement, whatever, pulling money out. And, you know, you know, not necessarily going on the splurge, but pulling money out to treat yourself to what you so deserve. OK, the nine of pentacles. And when I say the stamina, having the strength and keeping something together, yes, hard work at work, your actual physical job. It could be your relationships, keeping your family together through any storms, thick or thin, keeping your romantic partnership together. Same energy applies. Now this card says, okay, you done, you done put the work in. Um, now it's time to take a break. And, and you're not supposed to feel guilty about having to uh, do splurges on yourself because you are deserving. So the Nine of Pentacles here could still represent a job. It could represent a pay raise. That's in your shadow. Following the three. Oh, look at this. Eight of Wands has been showing his face up for practically all these last readings. So you're the last one that I'm doing for this week, Gemini and Eight of Wands. Now you get the good news. So following the Three of Pentacles, there's the good news. Good news comes in, comes your way. It's a touch of surprise. This is my communicator card. So effective communication. You know how important uh, communication is for us Geminis, right? And we always like to talk and communicate. So, um, however, it's effective, you know, because it's an even number one. So the information that you put out to others is going to be well received. And the information that comes to you is going to be well received. This card here never seems to generate uh, miscommunication. Never. It's a touch of surprise as well. So you may be expecting uh, something to arrive in the mail, maybe something that you've uh, ordered online when you did some online shopping, parcel packages. It's coming this week. 
Eight of Wands, Page of Wands, Ace of Wands is always that element of energy that, you know, oftentimes puts smiles on people's faces. Okay, so we'll see how that one plays out. So this here represents um, fire, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Now we have the Hangman, Major Arcana, hanging in the balance, sitting on the fence. This uh, energy, as I read it for you, Gemini, just simply means that uh, so far we haven't drawn any of your own energies, the swords, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just here to tell you that if you got anything going on decision-wise, uh, um, you have the time to take. Okay, there's all the time in the world. There's no rush. That's why the hangman is hanging. If I was reading these cards in the reverse and that showed up in the reverse, then you have thought about it. You have already gathered your information. Now you're ready to, you know, move forward, proceed forward here. Just take your time. There's no new. Yeah, there's no need to rush. All right, so that's with the hangman, Major Arcana. Up next, now we have the, I just talked about the swords, didn't I? Seven of swords here. All right, so seven of swords. I read the energy um, during the general readings that somebody from your past is still conflicted, but they're thinking about you, Gemini. This pr approach could be that they're, you know, uh, not only thinking about you, they're still conflicted, but they're also sneaky as hell. So be discerning if you uh, allow somebody to uh, re-enter your life that um, right now uh, is potentially thinking about you and want to. Um, now, God forbid that they come in and try to, you know, you know, get with you just to do harm. Because see, what I don't like is the knife in his hand. I don't like that. So um, they're still conflicted. Also, the Seven of Swords is the uh, type of energy that I read that anything that you laid down this place, forgot about, and couldn't find it, it reappears this week, or you find it. This is a card of mental challenges. And so when we lose things, we have all of that mental um, spaghetti going on in our head. That's why we, you know, put things down and forget where we put it. But there's an aspect of it being returned or you finding whatever it, it, it was. Okay. My moon. Okay. My main concern here, Gemini, let me just stay focused here is the person here who is from your past. This could be ex-lovers, ex-friends. Um, it could be family members that you, you know, sort of excommunicated with. And there's no, you know, because it mirrors the Eight of Swords, I'm not even going to use that energy to say, that, well, that would be the good news or the surprise. The surprise might be a little bit because of the knife here, you know, that, you know, I'm not thinking in terms of them potentially trying to create or, you know, cause you any harm, God forbid. All right, so the Seven of Swords here um, represents you, uh, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, but it, it is the swords that reflect on the hangman, decision-making, challenges. You have, the, you know, the time in the world to, um, you know, process stuff. There's no need to rush. Up next is the King of Cups. The King of Cups has been showing up quite a bit too. Father of all love, nurturing, caring, supportive, intuitive. So pay attention to your intuition. Following the Seven of Swords, definitely pay attention to your intuition. If this is someone that, uh, you know, I'm feeling that, you know, is thinking about Gemini right now and um, want to, you know, reach out to Gemini from your past, whomever this person is, could be male, female. Just pay attention to your intuition. That would be your guidance. The roles could be reversed here with the King of Cups. It could be female, so I could just be reading for Gemini's parents or grandparents. New relationships that may be formed. It could be business. It could be romantic. It definitely could be platonic. The boat in the background represents something for someone. It's either traveling, someone has an affinity for sailboats, or there's something to do, or the, the person I'm reading for and sees this is they live around water and boats. Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces represents that king of cups. Up next here, we have the, uh, the death card. Okay, rebirth. 
transformation. This is always about major transformation and it's an indication of closure. You know, things that we must get rid of out of our life, Gemini, that is no longer useful or serving our purpose. And I know oftentimes when, you know, these cards come up here, especially the different people don't want to hear that shit. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. we all go through some sort of transformation, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. <laughs> you know, but when somebody points it out to you, it's like, oh shit, yeah, there's something that I got to do or something that I've been thinking about doing, but just haven't gotten to it. Well, this is a major transformation that never denotes physical death, first and foremost. I always like the death card because it, it's, especially, you know, because it gives me an aspect of, you know, my own energies. Like, okay, Troy, what is it that you need to get rid of? And, you guys are the only ones that know what needs to be, you know, removed or closed out, phased out of your life, whether it's, you know, actual people or whether it's material things, something's got to go. So that's the death card. But once we're able to rid ourselves or whatever it is and clear some spaces up or clutter, then, you know, the new energy comes in. That's the promise of the death card rebirth. Death card represents Scorpio, Cancer, and Pisces. It's all about ending something. All right, so uh, Four of Swords is showing up here now, and it's the Rest, Relaxation, Rejuvenation. It is my Reclaim Your Independence and Your Freedom card. Taking a break. You can see she's resting in the nest. She may be uh, resting, and um, what, she what, what she has on her mind is her uh, love for her... Uh, significant others or it could be her family it could be her friends because the heart is here detaching see and, and you know what this is significant too because you know I, I never brought this up but i'm catching it now when i say that this is a card of detachment see the heart is here but there's no other person so it doesn't simply mean that you know when i say detach your energies from your significant relationships romantic platonic and so forth, it could be, you know, family and whatnot, you're just taking a break from them, but you're still carrying the love that you have for them here. See, that's why the heart is here. And reclaiming your independence, doing something that, you know, doesn't include them. But that doesn't mean that because you choose to do that, Gemini, that you don't still love them. That's why, again, the heart is in the nest with her. She's doing whatever she needs to do, but she's carrying the love that she has for others with her. Four swords. Okay, four swords. Take that break. Detach. If it's taking a day off from work, do it. When we come together and make these entities that we attach our energies to, to make us happy, then we're failing ourselves because of the fact that we cannot make those things responsible for our own personal happiness. Only we are responsible. And when I said in the previous videos, when the four swords shows up, people find, you know, breakups difficult because they have not mastered how to be by themselves, to be happy by themselves where they became extremely dependent on someone else to be there and to further add is that we came here on this planet on this earth alone guess what we're leaving alone we ain't taking nobody with us so when we master that to uh, you know that type of energy then it makes us stronger in the long run This is also planning trips, the Four of Swords. We haven't gotten any re uh, rolling cards, so if we get any rolling cards, and rolling cards, I mean traveling. Then that means you're planning a trip, and if the uh, traveling cards show up, the last three cards, you're taking a trip within this week. All right, so the Four of Swords here represents you, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Let's continue. Two of Pentacles, juggling two things, two jobs. Somebody may be working two jobs. Two people may be interested in you. You may be interested in two people. Um, some Geminis could be dating two people. The simplest thing that comes out of this energy is balancing your money, your your checkbooks or whatnot. Somebody can still get a, you know, a small pay raise like the Three of Pentacles that open the, the entire energy up. 
But whatever the imbalance is, it's minor. I wouldn't worry about it too much. And the Two of Pentacles represents Taurus, Capricorn, and Virgo. Now we have the Four of Wands, the Happiness card. So this is a, a wedding card. Mar uh, yeah, wedding card, um, ceremonies, could be receptions. This is, you know, possibly um, we have the Nine of Pentacles here in your shadow. Someone purchasing a home. Someone moving to a different relocation. Couples that, you know, are, you know, romantic could be deciding to move in with one another, family members moving in with one another, uh, friends moving in with one another to share expenses. It's all about that happiness inside a structure of a building. And that's the four of wands. OK, so you have a lot to be happy about. OK, um, yeah. Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius represent the Four of Wands. The last card here for this reading for you, Gemini, we got the Three of Cups. Okay, so the Three of Cups underneath the King of Cups. Joy, happiness, uh, abundance, feeling, um, you know, emotionally happy for the connections that you have. It mirrors the death card. So again, if you're ending a relationship or, you know, whether it's a romantic relationship or a platonic, you know, friendship, Here's the new uh, energy right here. This is the rebirth. Something to celebrate. Somebody's birthday, someone's anniversary, spending time with coworkers, going out to happy hour, whatever it is. Could be just, you know, spending time with your family. Could be your romantic partner. Could be just your friends. Three of Cups represents Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. So this is what I have for you this week. Interesting energies. It's all potential. It's not going to resonate for everyone. But Gemini, I appreciate you guys uh, for your continued support of me and my channel. Give this video a thumbs up and share it if you can. And um, just be safe with it, you know, whatever you do and be well. And if nothing else, Gemini, just keep smiling for me. Okay. And take care. Bye.